Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking an early look at the month of June of 2021. We're obviously very close, we're almost halfway through, or we are halfway through May. I'm still pre-making these videos for my trip, so it's actually May 15th from the day I'm making this video, which I think is either the halfway mark or past the halfway mark. But, uh, that's besides the point, we're going to be talking about early June forecast today. We're going to just be taking an early look at what we could expect for the month of June that is coming up very, very soon. <music> Let's hop right into it and first things first we're taking a look here at these sea surface temperatures because these do play actually a massive role uh, in any month any season of the you know of the weather really we have a negative pdo which is that cold ring that blue ring around the warm ring there that's along the west coast of north america and underneath alaska so look underneath alaska you see the blue you take that all the way down Canada it becomes a little bit yellow down there, but definitely offshore of California, you can tell there's a huge blue bubble. That is our negative PDO. Uh, and actually, that usually leads to more cold air moving onshore. This honestly, at first glance, makes me kind of believe we could have a warmer, warmer June overall in the eastern United States, and then also a colder June uh, in the western United States. I think a trough in the west, or at least the central United States, and then a ridge in the east is looking the most likely at this point. With the way the in, the oceans influence the weather around us, you can also see the Atlantic there, and all around the Gulf states, we have tons of oranges and reds. That's going to warm up the eastern United States, especially the Gulf states there that get heavily influenced in the southeast by the ocean temperatures. I could definitely see this being a warmer month in the eastern United States and a colder month out west. Uh, here, I drew these all on screen here. So our PDO, you can see listed in the blue there. Uh, the ENSO there is our La Nina or El Nino, you can tell, uh, is definitely in a little bit of a La Nina still at this point. And then our NAO, which is a negative when it's when there's warmer than normal sea surface temperatures there, and it's in a positive when there is colder than normal sea surface temperatures there. That one's a little confusing because it's basically like opposite day. You know, you got to kind of reverse it. It's a, it's a little bit confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's quite easy to keep track of that. Here's the seven-day change. So this gives us a little bit of an insight into how these things have changed very recently. As you can see, the Atlantic has been warming quite a bit, actually. We see a lot of reds and oranges here, which means we've we've probably increased by a degree or two Celsius here within these regions uh, pretty recently. And then you can see that areas in the Pacific have cooled down. So not only are we in this pattern, the cold Pacific and the warm Atlantic, we are heading even deeper into those patterns uh, as of the past seven days. This is obviously going to heavily influence the weather going on throughout the month of June. Uh, and this definitely plays a huge role uh, in what we expect for the month of June. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on we're going to look at a few charts that are going to really tell the whole story about where the sea surface temperatures have been going. We're going to take a little bit of an insight look into what we're expecting as far as the ENSO is, you know, what it's going to look like moving forward. And then we're going to take a look at some long range forecasts for the month of June as far as temperatures and precipitation are concerned. All right, now here's our Nino 3.4 index, and this is actually how we measure the Ento region, or if it's El Nino or La Nina. And as you can see, it has been warming over the past few months. Uh, and now it's at a basically a neutral Ento, but it has been cooling over the past couple of days. We're going to need to watch this very closely because that's going to be a major, major factor as we head towards the hurricane season and then eventually even the winter time. Uh, those are the two most impacted types of weather uh, from our uh, Enso region. So as this warms, we're going to need to see how that could impact our upcoming hurricane season and also how that could impact uh, the winter of 2021 to 2022, uh, which we've either released a winter thoughts video already or we're going to in a couple of days. If we haven't already, you can definitely look forward to that. I have my first winter thoughts video coming out in just a couple of days. I'm super excited to release that to you guys. It's one of my most anticipated videos of the year. Very, very excited to release that to you guys. Here's the overall North Atlantic temperature anomalies. And as you can see, uh, this has actually been warming over the past few months. So we have a very warm Atlantic right now. Overall, a, a very warm North Atlantic. Uh, and this is, again, going to possibly influence those temperatures along the eastern United States. This is very warm temperatures are in place right next to it. Uh, that could influence the air temperatures quite a bit. Now, here is our ENSO chart. So this is going to show us where that El Nino slash La Nina has been heading and where it's expected to head. And as you can see, we're just below, uh, we're on the La Nina side of a neutral ENSO. So we're right near the middle. We're not a La Nina or an en or a El Nino right now, or a neutral. But it looks like we could 
I'll go a little bit more in the more El Nino direction, but overall I expect this to be at a neutral end. So through uh, the hurricane season, uh, if not a La Nina, a very weak La Nina, but definitely a, a neutral Enzo looks most likely. And then even heading into the winter, uh, we do expect a neutral Enzo as well, which I will tell you, in my experience, I've only been paying attention to weather about 10 years or so. Uh, a neutral Enzo is about the best winter you can hope for in the eastern United States. It gives us the best shot at cold and snow. Uh, so I know a lot of people are going to be jumping for joy, and a lot of people are going to be very, very disappointed to hear that. Uh, but regardless of how you feel, that is kind of what we're expecting. I will talk more about that in our Winter Thoughts video, obviously. Now here is the CFS Monthly Model's Temperature Anomaly Forecast. As you can see, this model is expecting some colder than normal conditions for the central United States, but it is expecting some of those warmer than normal conditions along the eastern seaboard. And I think that does have a large part to do with those sea surface temperatures that are just offshore that are very warm, possibly influencing those air temperatures right above it. The west looks quite warm according to this model as well. And but I want you I want to remind you guys that this does not mean everything, you know. This is just a model. We're going to want to pay more attention to what we know and that's our past. What what the, the current conditions and the past conditions uh, typically historically lead to. That's our best bet at this point. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to move on and take a look at that precipitation forecast according to this model. We're going to take a little bit of a look at my severe weather forecast, my very early severe weather forecast. And then if we have time, we might even look at how this severe weather season has gone so far. All right, now here we are taking a look at that precipitation forecast according to our CFS model for the month of June. And as you can see, we do have those above average precipitation anomalies for the central United States especially, and but also mostly just the two thirds, the eastern two thirds there of the United States. More dry conditions expected there for the western United States. And then also this model thinks Florida could have some more dry conditions as well. Obviously one tropical cyclone and that is all said and done. We're definitely uh, more in the above average column with one tropical wave. Uh, so that can drastically change just based off of some system, like a single system or two separate systems or something like that. Uh, so that's going to be pretty hard to predict for these models. Here's my severe weather forecast, my very, very early severe weather forecast for the month of June. I think that this area, based on what I'm expecting as far as temperatures and precipitation go, this area has the best shot at seeing above average severe weather. Uh, now, this is just the best shot at having uh, above average severe weather. This does not mean I expect that this 100% will have above average severe weather. And I will be updating this on June 1st when we come out with our official June forecast. I'm looking forward to that. and I'm sure you guys are as well. We will have some updated information by the time we're taking a look at that. Now, real quickly, just to recap how our tornado season has gone so far a little bit. I was hoping to find a graph that looks like this, which from 2020, basically in all the way before that, you can find a chart like this for the tornado season. But for some reason this year, I cannot find the 2021 version of that. If anybody has any information as to if they're not making those anymore or anything like that, please let me know. But as far as I can tell, they're not. And I have not found one at all, which is very disappointing because I find that to be a very useful graph for seeing how the hurricane season, or sorry, the tornado season has gone. Here's our confirmed tornadoes in the United States in 2021 uh, so far. You can see we've had one EF4, eight EF3s, uh, and then a bunch, obviously, that are below EF3 rating. We've had 300 total, total tornadoes as of May 9th. Uh, as you can see, most of those tornadoes have occurred within Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. So that Dixie Alley has been getting the most action out of all of the different areas. Uh, so this has definitely been an east-based tornado season so far. I will obviously keep you guys up to date with this throughout the entire year, so be on the lookout for that. For our confidence tab today, we are at a 4 out of 6. Um, obviously, we're pretty close to this monthly forecast. Uh, I have a very good idea of what I expect to happen throughout the month of June based on our current sea surface temperature, so I feel quite good about this. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LePan, Do and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Garys, John Colisi, and Dwight Phelan. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron end screen, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, our Weather Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, and Cat Bite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. 
and be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.